Okay, so uh, global warming is where we should start out. I thought to start start out today, and uh, as you perhaps have been uh, hearing and uh, reading in the news last months and and uh, weeks and years, uh, there's quite a lot of of news about storms and extreme weather conditions and and uh, whatnot and also droughts, uh, rainfalls, and and all of this and and that's uh, of course direct uh, effects of uh, uh, changing uh, climate that we have. At, and uh, also, as we see in the picture above, uh, the planet starts to become quite red here, which is not really a good thing, even if it can be warm and cozy sometimes. Uh, what I want to focus on today is so uh, climate change. Uh, could that be a career change uh, as well? And uh, it poses some uh, extraordinary uh, challenges for for us humans and and other species on our planet. Uh, but could there also be opportunities uh, here uh, for us to grab? And uh, also, uh, uh, as as for me, uh, I have a background in a tradition traditional business. Uh, as finance, uh, so how can that be a great stepping stone uh, towards our career in uh, the renewables uh, energy sector? Uh, but uh, to to go forward, we need to also understand what is the renewable energy sector, and uh, a common expression that you might hear from time to time is the energy transition. And I wanted to explain uh, a bit what the energy transition actually means. So, if we quote ARENA, which is the International Renewable Energy Agency, uh, uh, the energy transition is a pathway towards uh, uh, the transformation of the global energy sector uh, from fossil based to carbon, uh, uh, zero carbon by the second uh, half uh, of this century. And then to dive into this, what that this actually means uh, is if we go into some numbers uh, crunching and take a crash course here in the energy sector, what it looks like today and what it should look uh, like in already now, preferably, and, and uh, in the close years to, to follow here. Uh, then we can see that uh, almost 70% uh, of the of the uh, this kind of uh, improvements we have to made will be made within renewable energy electrification and energy efficiency. Uh, our common currency we could perhaps call it uh, is uh, CO2 emissions or carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, quite familiar expression and, and term to us all, I think, by, by now. And today uh, we have roughly uh, 40, we can round it up to 40 uh, gigatons of uh, CO2 emissions uh, every year. And this was slowed down a bit. This is a growing, ever growing number year by year uh, during the pandemic last year as travel ceased to a halt and so on. And many other activities uh, such as aviation, uh, it, it was slowed down the growth of this was slowed down a bit, uh, but now it uh, this year it has has uh, grown again, and this is kind of the the number. And many are talking about that for for businesses and in the energy sector, uh, carbon dioxide will be the currency which uh, uh, businesses uh, engage in and pay with in the coming years and and in the future. And uh, a gigaton is is quite a lot. Uh, actually, if we run this, this up to, to, to 40 gigatons, that, f that is uh, 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide every year. And we should now be on a path to, 20, by 2050, this should be zero. So there is 10 <laughs> zeros behind this number. And it's growing each, each year, uh, really, because also the use, currently the use of fossil fuels is growing as well. Uh, so we're quite in a, in a hurry a hurry here to do something about this. 
uh, and that's I think the, the understatement also to say that. Uh, so, so to understand this uh, uh, even uh, get a better depth of the understanding the energy transition at what it means. So if we talk about uh, CO2 as the currency, then we have to talk about money as well. Because to do something about this, to get to this net zero in less than 30 years from now and reverse this trend, that, that destructive trend that we have, we have to talk about the money. Because the only way we are going to uh, achieve these goals uh, are, is really by huge investments in projects. And that's, uh, that's really the, the only way to do it. It's not enough to stand here and have a talk about it. It has to be tangible projects out there in the field. That's the only single way to do it. And if we, we now talk about uh, uh, the money in 2019, you can see, see in the picture that uh, uh, there was uh, roughly $2 trillion in, in US dollars uh, in investments in renewables uh, that year. And uh, in yellow, on the, in the middle or, or on the left, uh, we can see this kind of planned energy uh, scenario. And on the right in blue, we can uh, see what we should be doing and should be investing to reach this 1.5 degree uh, uh, kind of ceiling on, on global, global warming, warming by 2050, which is some, something that uh, all experts and scientists agree we absolutely have to, have to, to achieve or the consequences will be quite dire. Uh, but if we, we, if we look at the numbers here, uh, we can see that uh, bet between this year and by 2030, uh, we really need to step up investments. And, and uh, currently, there is some $3.5 trillion uh, planned in investments in renewable energy. Uh, but it should be almost double that to keep uh, track of this 1.5 degree uh, warming uh, target. So there's quite a lot of money that has to be invested. And really nobody has this much money, no, no single stakeholder has this much money alone. So it really needs to be come from a, a lot of different sta stakeholders and, and investors. And when we have been talking about the money and we understand what that means, we should also uh, look a bit closer at the current picture, uh, what, what this all, all means. So currently, uh, the, if we're looking at some 95 USD uh, trillion in investments in, in the energy sector. And, uh, but the big problem is that almost half of this is now with our current plan uh, dedicated to fossil fuels which will only contribute further to global warming, obviously. Uh, and here, so, so that is the, the figure uh, on the left. And uh, then we can see the figure in the, in the middle. Th that's kind of this transforming uh, scenario, what we should be looking at. And really on the, on the right, that is the ideal scenario to, to really reach this carbon ne neutrality net zero goal by uh, 2050. So we have to more than uh, half the investments that are currently allocated to fossil energy fuels and shift that uh, towards uh, renewables, energy eff efficiency and, uh, and electrification and infrastructure. And this will require obviously some huge willpower to relocate this much money from projects that are already in the pipeline, so to speak and to re reverse the current trend. So I, now that we have done a quick uh, recap on uh, the ener energy transition and renewables, what it means in numbers, I want to, to then uh, perhaps uh, focus some more on employment and uh, why renewables could be a, a career for some people or, or, or many, many people even, because it will be a huge or a, at least a large in employer on a global scale uh, now and in years to come. And also 
for this to be possible, uh, really there, there, and we have been talking about the money and investments needed, uh, it also has to be profitable. And pro the more profitability we get in the re renewable sector, uh, that will also boost the growth of the renewable energy sector further. So if we can see here a trend uh, about a decade back, uh, how it, what it has been looking, uh, looking like. So we have some uh, progressive, uh, progressiveness in, in the growth of, of jobs within the renewable sector. This is energy, the, the renewable energy sector uh, alone. Uh, so, and in 2019 was something around 11.5 million jobs. And we can see, see the allocation between uh, hydropower, solar, uh, bioenergy, uh, wind energy, uh, and so on and so on. But then to kind of, this is what we are aiming for already for 2023 is a further five and a half million jobs. So it's an at an uh, really increase, increasing pace. And for this to be possible, obviously, we need to people also to put into these new jobs and to re relocate these people and retrain all of these skilled uh, workers. And as, as we can see also that uh, the trends and projections, projections show that uh, roughly one million jobs will be lost in the fossil fuel sector, but can be then regained in, within the renewable sector, which is obviously a good thing, but it is, it is a, a, a change for sure. And to talk about the profitability of, of this whole transition, we can see here also some for, uh, figures that in 2020, uh, the, the costs for in these kind of energy systems, different uh, energy resources such as uh, solar and uh, onshore and offshore wind uh, have uh, continued to fall, which is uh, really uh, absolutely necessary for this transition to take place. Uh, also, one, another thing uh, for, for myself, which is of course uh, very interesting coming from a financial background, is uh, also the uh, return on investment uh, investments uh, within renewables. Uh, in order to attract money, it has, as I said before, it has to be uh, profitable. And uh, we need the money to make the investments, to make the projects happen, uh, to, to decrease uh, carbon di dioxide that we currently have. And as we see here, that for every US dollar uh, that is, is spent or invested, the yield, so the return on investment, uh, can be everything between two and four, five and a half dollars. So uh, it also poses quite a, a great investment opportunity uh, for, for investors and, and others uh, alike. So then uh, if considering work within the renewable sector, uh, what work is there on offer? Uh, of course, for people that uh, might consider joining up, they, they want to, to know what, what can I do, how can I co contribute. Uh, so for me uh, personally, I think it's extremely important to be uh, passionate ab about the work, but also to stay business minded, not to get lost in the technology and projects alone. It needs to be, uh, it needs to add up, so to speak. And uh, we have electrification, digitalization and innovation. I would say that these three are are uh, really fundamental keywords uh, when uh, working in this sector. And uh, this will also make up the tools for us uh, to create this kind of carbon neutral way of life we are aiming for uh, by 2050, again, in less than 30 years from now. Uh, then to come back to some, some uh, different segments within the renewable sector, what work there is, we have uh, a lot, of the most work is uh, um, at this moment and probably will be also for, for some time uh, uh, within the solar and PV sector. Uh, that's the, 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 the largest one, one right now. But the bioeconomy, biofuels, we have, have hydro, wind energy is uh, growing fast at the moment. We, we're seeing a lot of this uh, potential offshore wind energy 
projects and, and developments uh, coming up and there's really really a, a, a nice diversity and uh, many opportunities uh, to work within the renewable sector. Also to see kind of crunch the numbers for employment uh, we can see within the renewable sector so so here in 2021 we are well below 20 million jobs uh, totally again uh, kind of what all you in include uh, he here in these figures but if we focus on the energy sector here alone uh, but to uh, make then again this 1.5 uh, degree uh, kind of target by 2050 we need to double uh, these uh, numbers or, or amount of employment to, to over uh, 40 million jobs in uh, less than 30 years again. So uh, well more than 20 million jobs will be, have to be created within this sector to make that target. There's a lot to do, but uh, what about my skills? If I would consider joining up, uh, there's a different segments again, different uh, companies to work uh, and energy production utilities, there's transport, energy storage, uh, bioenergy and biofuel circular economy and so on. Uh, but then if you're kind of uh, wondering that uh, do you have enough skills for this and so on, I would see, say yes definitely. As we see uh, there is a huge uh, amount of work that requires low qualified workers or skills or specialization at this point. And thus, that doesn't uh, mean that it's unimportant. It uh, really means that it's, that's where, where, the, where the bulk is. But then obviously there's uh, a lot of these uh, common traditional tra uh, administrative roles and uh, whatnot that we have in any kind of business. Uh, so yeah. But my, my own findings when shifting to this business, innovation, automation, digitalization, those are uh, common traits that I have found with the energy or the financial industry and the energy indus industry. And uh, these are these kind of parallels I could, could make. And uh, this all is to get on the train, uh, I think you should. It's uh, extremely exciting and a lot of unexplored territory. Thank you.